Okay, class, welcome to our week. Um, we are into February 8th through the 13th. It's February 8th, and we're talking about selecting measuring instruments. So this week you have chapter 6 to read, and you'll do a quiz as well on that chapter. And that's talking about selecting measuring measurement instruments. And how do you select those? So with research, there's almost always some kind of instruments that you are going to use to measure, whether it's learning or attitude or for human subjects research, it's oftentimes feelings about things or attitudes or learning or achievement or progress. And so what we can do is we can select a proper instrument. There are a lot of instruments that are out there available, as the book will mention to you. Um, I wanted to introduce one that I have been using for my own survey recently. And this is actually a research study that you'll get to become involved in fairly soon, starting next week, actually. And it's a survey that I created to find out about technology use among K-12 teachers in South Dakota. And so I created this instrument myself. So another option with instruments is, of course, selecting one. You can find one that's already existing. Or you can create one, like the one that I created. And the book discourages creating an instrument for your own survey or for your own research because uh, most instruments that you do create, of course, have not been validated as a quality survey instrument. There hasn't been data collected, perhaps, on how well it actually is, how valid and reliable the instrument actually is. But this is one that I created, and I actually did a little bit of crunching numbers on how valid and reliable it is, which it shows pretty good numbers on this. And I'm using a tool called Google Forms, which is fantastic. It's part of the Google Drive um, tools, set of tools that you can get for free, or you can sign up for for free. And you can create a survey. So this one asks things like number of people who live in your city, school's town or city, and they can select one of these answers, or your years of teaching experience. And so you can just add your own question into these items and uh, choose qu a question to ask, and then what type of question. There are a bunch of types, text, multiple choice, check boxes, and so forth. And uh, then once you're done, you can actually send this form out using the Send Form button to as many people as you want to be able to respond to your survey. And they can respond and give you information that you're looking for as part of a research study. Now, of course, this being a survey would mean that it's a part of a. It would be part of survey research, and that's the research study that I am currently engaged in. It would fit under the survey research um, category. So that's um, the technology used among K-12 teachers in South Dakota, and that's a possibility. Again, you can develop an instrument or you can select an instrument for your research. The book encourages selection of an instrument, not developing one, because developing one, it's an untrue, untried thing. But you can develop one. It's good to pilot test it and to crunch the stats on it to find out if it's good for development. Um, also, this study uses a uh, Likert scale. So you, you'll be learning about Likert scales in your text. But if you look here, if you've ever seen a survey that has strongly agree, strongly disagree, and everything in between, that's a Likert scale. Um, although most Likert scales have an undecided in the middle, or a neutral in the middle, rather than the slightly agree and slightly disagree. And I actually spoke with a surveying expert once, and he said, you know, you should really do slightly disagree and slightly agree rather than undecided, because really undecided means nothing, or neutral means really nothing. It, it's not really a central measure. And if you do slightly agree and slightly disagree, it forces somebody to either agree or disagree. They cannot just be neutral on a subject. And so you can count up your tallies a little bit easier. And so slightly agree would fit within the agree area. And slightly disagree would still fit within the disagree area. So that's an example of a Likert scale that you'll be learning about as well. Um, and then two concepts that are important from the reading are validity and reliability. So validity is, does the survey or whatever instrument you choose in your research actually measure what it purports to measure? Is it actually measuring the thing that it's supposed to be measuring? So that's a big question, right? You have an instrument. Is it actually measuring what it's supposed to be measuring? Let's say it's trying to measure 
self-efficacy. Good concept from psychology and counseling and is it, you know, you have an instrument that measures that. Does it actually measure self-efficacy though? Or do people just respond in ways that they think you want to hear? So that's a good question, validity. And then reliability is the question of does this survey instrument or does this instrument measure the same thing over time? Like if I was the same person taking this survey in, in let's say two or three months from now, would I give the same responses? Is it going to get the same results from the same group of people um, over time, over if it was done twice or three times or whatever? That's reliability. So some of those concepts are very important for you um, as you talk about measuring or measurement instruments in research. Um, so for the discussion this week also, you have APA in-text citations and references. So you're going to post an excerpt from an article of your choice you're going to cite it in APA format and post that on there and then include a reference to the article that is APA formatted. So you're going to have a citation, in-text citation for the article and also a reference for the article. And it's a good opportunity to, to just practice your APA in-text citations and references lists in preparation for submitting your preliminary literature review. And that preliminary literature review is also due this week. So it needs to be handed in by February 13th. And so you'll need to submit that with these elements, APA formatted narrative writing, studies categorized logically, written uh, writing flows logically, systematically, and seven to 10 sources. If you need some help, if you're stuck on this assignment, go to the general class items here. And you can look for sample papers. And you can look for some literature reviews in these papers, like a teaching and learning research article. You'll see literature review sections from some of these papers, and you can follow those. So take a look at some of those. The meta-analysis about death and dying is an example. You can look at that and see how they are reviewing previous literature to kind of help guide your own literature review. Now let's say you're doing a study on self-efficacy in your literature review. You will want to organize this logically and uh, as is required in the assignment. So here you can go to preliminary literature review. It says studies are categorized logically. So you don't just list study after study, like Smith found this, Johnson found this. Instead, you want to categorize them in some logical manner. So let's say I wanted to do a study about the effect of the iPad on learning in the classroom. Then I would want to look at the different types of studies that are out there as I'm reading them. And you should have been reading your, your articles up to this point. And then determine how maybe they categorize together. So maybe there's a whole group of studies about reading comprehension with the iPad. And so I might put a few paragraphs about reading comprehension and list all the studies about reading comprehension with the iPad in that few paragraphs. And then maybe there's a whole other subset of studies about um, student, uh, what would it call it? Student self-direction um, self with iPads. And so maybe I'd then list here are some studies. I'd say there are a bunch of studies also that have talked about student self-direction with the iPad. For instance, Johnson found that students tend to be more self-directed with the iPad and work well with the iPad that way. However, findings from Lee said this about self-direction with the iPad. So you want to organize it logically and not just list study after study and have real quick points about each one, but instead organize them within a logical area. All right, well, I think that's all I have to prepare you for this week. Good luck getting those preliminary literature reviews in, and I'll see you later.